traders good afternoon i trust you are all well quick market recap discussing some of the major markets we looked at last week where they're currently positioned and perhaps what we're looking to trade next so we'll get straight into it s p 500 last week we did look for a confirmed break above 39.60 and that's exactly what we've got the last four or five days have shown a fantastic amount of buying most of our community are in already if you're not in do not worry there is still further upside potential i wouldn't advise trading a daily time frame at this stage you have missed the boat there but smaller time frame cyclicity using our core strategy will be the way to pick up the next move so since a break of this level we have had one two and three opportunities to continue buying the bounce buying the dip following the direction of the overall time frame you can see some real progressive buying we've moved a significant amount from 39.60 now priced at 40.85 so lots of opportunity to make money following our core rules uh, and again buying the dip in a confirmed overall daily market so again next trade if you're not live already there is further upside opportunity so look for price to confirm and make a higher high from where we're currently positioned and the next bounce off the 20 moving average will be in line with uh, another entry so some of our, our senior traders are looking at anywhere between 41.50 to 42 as a potential target as 4200 priced on the s p nasdaq nas 100 in a very very similar position and you can see here since crossing over and breaking out this consolidation the level we wanted to be a confirmed buyer was 13200 and since then we've only had two opportunities to continue following momentum following direction but these are very low risk high reward trades and as a trader that's exactly what we want when the fx market is messy untidy and perhaps extremely volatile we can diversify our portfolio into different asset classes and most importantly into assets that we understand if you're a trend-based trader you need to see trend cyclicity in order to find early entry points if you're a reversal trader, you want to be looking for exhaustion at ends or starts of trends. So being positioned in the FX market can be volatile, but there are always markets out there that will suit your style of trading. So this is something that our members can look at with their coaching coaches in one to one coaching, where once we understand your style, we can point you in the right direction to trading asset classes that suit you. So it may not always be FX. It may be commodities, metals, energies, whatever. As long as you understand it and you're profitable, keep trading gold is again another metal we're looking at and we saw a fantastic double bottom formation from 1680 uh, most of our traders did take a limit order from that so you'll be in a nice bit of profit from now if you're not in this already we're looking for a break of the daily high i would then advise looking at perhaps a one hour or a smaller time frame to look for a frequent cycle back up above that most recent daily high but again since the bounce in here crossover of the moving average we have had a couple of 20 moving average core setups allowing you to continue being a buyer at potentially an early change in trend so again if you're not live already look for a next one hour bounce from the 20 moving average or if we do see progressive buying and a real market extension then you can look at a 15 minute chart same rules apply look for a 15 minute pullback bullish cyclicity bullish formation picking up in this area and a continuation to trade the core strategy on a 15 minute time frame but please do make sure you have confirmation from the higher time frame and you are trading the correct phase. You don't want to be looking for an aggressive position on a 15 minute chart while your higher time frame is still showing signs of pulling back lower. You get stopped out, price will then move in your favor at 100, 200 pips, and it will get highly frustrating. So, again, if you're not 100% sure on understanding time frame agreement, using the bigger time frames to your advantage when using the smaller time frames it's another opportunity to book a session with one of our coaches just to move over to the dollar the dollar's in quite an interesting position and we've just dipped below 92.50 which is not something that we ideally wanted should we want to be a buyer of the uptrend formation we're seeing i would still like to see a daily close back up above that as i said it's not half five yet and the market daily closes 10 p.m gmt here so a buyer's break back above that, a buyer's close, even tomorrow, if we see a bullish candle formation, bullish engulfing, ideally back above 92.50, back above the 200 daily moving average, it will lead us into a confirmation to continue being a buyer of the dollar, therefore selling euro, selling Aussie and other majors that we have on our watch list. So something of interest here. Now, where you're going to need to adapt is if we start to look at price action and sellers become a lot stronger. In a phase two, when we're becoming a buyer of a market, we want to see strong selling, sorry, strong buying, weak selling, strong buying, weak selling. 
when we start to see weak selling, which is the shortest phase against overall trend being an uptrend, when weak selling starts to get strong selling, that's when we can start to anticipate a reversal or a change in direction. So I want you to start to manage the current phase that we're seeing. Looking at an hourly time frame, we are in fact in an hourly downtrend. Um, and, and to be honest, with the way price is at the minute, it has been extremely bearish today. So I want you to manage price action. Now, I, as I said, I want a daily close back above 92.50. That will help confirm my higher time frame move. Should we start to see break and retest from 92.50, there may be one more cycle in it short. Again, if we do see a progressive, uh, another one hour cycle, then as traders, we're going to have to adapt and accommodate more short term dollar selling before we see that change in direction. But as a bias, yes, I do want to continue buying the dollar. I think it's positioned in a very, very nice area to continue buying. Um, I would like it to stay back above 93 this time. As you can see, it peaked above and dropped back. That would then be in my second trade to add risk into my position once we are back above 92.50, second trade above 93, and so on. We follow levels and recent highs to break that to confirm the next move. So that's where the dollar's positioned at the minute. In an ideal world, we want a break and a bullish close back above 92.50. That would be ideal. Should sellers continue strength and price move lower, then we're going to have to look for one hour cyclicity to accommodate shorter time frame cycles. There's no harm in being a seller in this area before an overall buy position at the start of a new move. On the flip side, obviously looking at euro, we're positioned now between 18 and 18.50. So I, I want price again to close below 18.50. That will be an ideal area to start to accommodate how we're going to enter this position short at the start of a new phase. 1850 lies where the daily pivot is. It is previous low resistance, so there are multiple reasons for price to stall. It may be a case of price trapped between 18 and 1850 for a couple of days before sellers kick back in. Where we're currently positioned, we are in a downtrend, and you can see the lower highs are in play. So this is exactly what we're looking for price to continue doing. It's not quite ready to sell just yet, unless you're an aggressive limit order trader. You may already be in already. But for me personally, it just needs a little bit more confirmation and more sellers to kick back in. Should we see a daily close above 1850? Should we see one more cycle tomorrow morning break above? Again, we may have to accommodate one more cycle being dollar weakness, push price higher to allow the sellers to sell at a more expensive price making the drop a bit more aggressive and hopefully allow us to catch a nice move tomorrow morning. So something to think about there. But again, ideally, we want to see price push lower in a daily phase too. But 18.50 does lie a strong resistance. So break above that, we may need to adapt. Focus on the daily close. All the time the daily bar is messing around and one hour price action isn't showing us too much. It's not of interest. Daily close will help us understand where the market's positioned from a wider scale. Just to look at cable, cable still trapped in its long term uh, channel. As you can see, price has been bouncing through this area here. Back testing support, we've broke pattern. We are in a confirmed downtrend, in fact. It is pretty messy price action in here. So, what I think we'll see is I'll just move to a four hour time frame here. And we are in a four hour uptrend. So, what I'll be looking for, in fact, the highs and the lows where they're positioned, providing we can stay as a higher low in this area here, that is your two high, two low points confirming the start of a new bullish move. The current price action, you've seen buyers step in on this candle. You're seeing indecision on this candle here. So ideally, what we want is an additional bullish engulfing candle. Buy stop at the high, sell stop at the, uh, sorry, buy stop at the high, stop loss at the low, and look to break out this four hour channel up testing these highs again at 140. So that would be the move. And again, once we see that move on a four hour time frame, it will allow buying on a one hour or a 15 minute chart following that overall same direction. So Bullish engulfing close, buy stop above would be the next ideal trade. Um, if we don't see that and we see pound drop off, again, look at bottom support in this area uh, as a next opportunity to buy. You could think about short term selling in here or a break below that. Again, opens up the doors to trade in line with a move down to this support level. Uh, I don't think we'll see price at the 200. I think that being April pound strongest month. We're just waiting for perhaps sellers to blow off their last bit of selling and then buyers to buy at a cheaper price to take price back up and above in the overall direction of trend. So that's what we need to think about. Again, I don't want you to put all your eggs in one basket where we have been discussing uh, where we have been discussing uh, pound being strong in April. I don't want you to pretty much take that as 100 percent fixed. We're going to need to understand price action. We're going to need to understand 
what to look for in the right time and right space to catch the early stage of this move. Seasonality is about understanding the peaks and the troughs. It's not about trading, buying throughout all of April. We find lows. Technically, we understand where price is bottoming out. And then we look for, for opportunities to go long. So four hour is the first fix that we're looking for. Let's see if we can get some bullish engulfing. I don't expect much to happen tonight. I'll probably go sideways till tomorrow morning now. European market open. Uh, traders step back in. Bullish open. We may see progressive uh, buying tomorrow morning. So that's where we're positioned of the pound. I mean, Aussie Kiwi isn't really doing anything too exciting, exciting to be honest. Um, again, back above our 76.40 support. We're probably going to see one more cycle to the upside. Um, Aussie has been correlated with other markets and it is moving in a similar fashion to pound, in fact. So again, being a buyer is not off my list. There's too much buying going on in this phase too, because in fact, we are in what looks like a downtrend. There's too much buying going on in here for me to want to be a seller right now. So this does open up the doors for perhaps another cycle to the upside. And I do like this bullish formation bar. If this bar would have closed above 76.40, I'd be in this now. It just closed shy and we've seen a lot of buying take place right now. So again, just look for a next pullback and bounce. We may get one more Aussie cycle to the upside. Kiwi... Kiwi isn't really doing too much either. I mean, this is obviously our downtrend formation. Yes, it can follow similar patterns to how Aussie performs, but I think Kiwi's Aussie's stronger than Kiwi, if I'm honest. So if we start to see Kiwi drop off a little bit, then that's when we can look at, as an example, if pound strong Kiwi weak, pound Kiwi would be your opportunity to go long. So right now it's not going to look as pretty as we'd like, but if we do get something like this, then pound strength Kiwi weakness, that will be your daily phase one. Then anything okay. in here, you become a buyer of on a smaller time frame. So that's sort of how you match your cross pairs up. Strong, weak, put them together, look for an opportunity. Uh, dollar CAD. Interesting one from Dollar CAD, in fact. We're seeing an inverse head and shoulders form in here. You've got 126 resistance ahead. So to confirm this head and shoulders, I want to see price move back up above 126. Use that area now, this sort of, even just to draw it roughly, use this area as a break and retest of 126 as a daily confirmation opportunity. Now, remember, anything in this area here, this could be four or five days worth of buying. So once you find direction from the higher time frames, use the smaller time frames to look for more cyclicity, more bars, more opportunities following the overall direction of trend. So your daily finds your way where to go. Your one hour gives you your entries. You can adapt if you want to be a smash and grab style trader. I wouldn't say scalpel, although a lot of you guys love to scalp. It's a smash and grab in and out, 20 pip risk, 20, 30 pip target. That's perfectly fine. It probably suits the current climate we're looking at at the minute. If you're more of a sort of long-term pension builder style trader, then use your daily confirmation, break above key areas of support, find more confirmed areas to buy, then buy with confidence. That's what I'm seeing here. Inverse head and shoulders forming, breaks up and above in this region. Dollar Swissy, Dollar Swissy, uh, we're back below recent support, so a bit of a weird one. Uh, I think what we'll see is a weekly pullback now. Um, dollar, dollar Swiss is probably the first one to actually show the dollar strength. I mean, over the last few weeks, we've had some fantastic trades um, of Dollar Swiss, and you can see from a weekly perspective, we was, we was trending for 13, 14 weeks, and naturally, you'd expect price to let off a bit of steam. So I think this move here could be more than just a daily phase two and a bounce back off 93.50 support. I think it might come down slightly lower. So that will allow us to look for some shorter time frame opportunity trades. Um, again, just like the one we saw today, back into the 20 moving average. So similar move. We may get one more cycle to short dollar Swiss before perhaps if dollar is strong in the next couple of weeks, then be a, be a buyer. But I think this will be more than just a daily phase two. If it's a weekly phase two, we might get down nice and low, bottom out. And then pick back up. So something to think about there. Obviously, dollar yen as well. well it's, it's funny enough, it's the 6th of April today, which is a seasonally bullish area or date for yen strength. So that's selling everything against the yen. And the way price is positioned, again, look at, I mean, look, from, from a weekly perspective, we've been buying for the last 12, 13 weeks. So naturally, we're due a, we're due a retracement. Price is ducking back below 110 resistance, which was our intraday target. So it all ties quite nicely in with a move to the downside. Um, again, so just manage this phase two. It might be a little bit more than just a few bar pullback and another move to the upside. Should the dollar be extremely strong, um, then again, you can look at breaks above, back above 110 to be a buyer. All the time it's messing around in this area. 
It's not doing anything too much. But again, don't an just anticipate a slightly deeper move, uh, more of a corrective move in dollar yen and just a slight little pullback there. Uh, in terms of yen crosses, Kiwi yen is, an, is something I'm looking at shorting. Uh, you can start to see price breaking down. Also, ca uh, CAD yen as well. We can just to show you a weekly chart. Uh, CAD gen is incredibly overbought. So you can see the sellers have started to kick back in over the last couple of weeks. So CAD gen could be an opportunity that we're looking at sh selling as well. So back into the 200 one hour short. This will probably uh, have a look at this tonight, guys. So break, retest 200. Down we go. Kiwi's in a similar position as well, in fact. Um, look for a lower high formation, 2050 crossing there, ideally below the 200. But they're nice, early, more aggressive one hour opportunity trades catching this weekly change in direction. So, look, guys, a couple of opportunities out there. More importantly, a couple of opportunities to work with our trading community, bounce off our senior trading team here in London or Dubai. Also, work with our coaches. I mean, you're more than welcome to book in a free consultation or free coaching session with some of the team just to start to understand what type of trader you're going to be, build a trading plan, find a strategy that suits you around your lifestyle, or just spend time here on the trading floor. We have multiple events lined up that are free live trading events where you can come down, learn a strategy, trade live with us, have some fun. These will all be at a local five star hotel and socially distanced following government guidelines. So, obviously, numbers capped at 30. Um, so there's opportunities for anybody serious. If you're not serious, you're just dabbling at trading, then we're probably not the company for you. But if you are serious, you do want to make a career out of trading, feel free to drop us a message, get in contact, and, uh, and we'll welcome you into our trading community. Good luck, guys. Plenty out there this week. Going to be a good trading week, so get stuck in, make some money, and have some fun. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.